Hey guys, I'm Kevin. Welcome back to set. Welcome back to B2S, guys. I cannot wait to get into this one. Today we're in Orange County, and let me bring you over to one of my homies. My name is Justin Jones. I'm a cinematographer here in Los Angeles. I shoot tons of music videos, narratives, commercial, short film, basically you name it. Today we're going to be doing projector effects. A projector is a really powerful tool to have in your back pocket. It's so dynamic. You can use it to front light, back light. You can project onto windows. From indie to the pro, there's an option in the projector world for every budget. Today we are using a high-end projector, something that's very substantial. But for those of you who are scrappy, those indie filmmakers, don't feel discouraged if you can't afford the ones we're using today because we can talk about all the other ones that you can't afford. I cannot wait to get into him. He knows his stuff with projectors. I can't wait to learn. Man, this is gonna be cool, but let's get into the nitty gritty. We'll be right back with you. So let's take a look at what projectors we're using today. Looks like we have a few of them here. Let's start with this one. What's this guy? This is a laser projector. It's 7,500 lumens. So lumens equal the amount of output the light is, right? So with another light, you know, the intensity of the light, it's, that's how they measure it with lumens. And then when we move over to this bigger one here, this is a 12,000 lumen. But there's other options out there like this one, right? That's uh, what I'm used to. Right, exactly. So here's a little Epson projector. Cameras are getting better at picking up light so you can use you know, lower intensity projectors. Right. So this is a good example of something you could get on Amazon. So with those dual native ISO cameras, you might be able to get away with this depending on how wide you're shooting, right? So when you opt for a cheaper version like this, you're a little bit more limited, right? This does have a zoom and focus, but you're limited to one lens. The reason of going with something like this is how far away your projector needs to be, right? If this is really far away, that light's not gonna be as bright as you need it. Right. So in most of my music videos, I opt for something like this just because it gives me the output I need, especially when shooting slow motion and stuff like that. Right. But there's yeah. also a lot of other things like perspective shifts yeah. and being able to use mapping and stuff like that. The other side of this is how do we figure out what we're going to be projecting? There's a ton of different ways to get imagery, right? My favorite is to make it myself, right? Either, you know, in pre-production, we go record something that we want to shoot, uh, but that, you know, takes time and resources and essentially money. So there's a lot of cool free sites and subscription sites, Storyblocks mm -hmm. or Artgrid. And then there's some free ones like Pexels that have HD videos that you can use absolutely for free. Just make sure you check the licensing on them, the Creative Commons and all that stuff to make sure that you're safe to use Good them. Point. So when going through your images and choosing something to project on the background, you wanna pick images that match what your talent's going to be doing. So if it's like a hip hop artist and it's intense and you slow your shutter angle to give you that really jittery kind of thing, match that with something like a glitch that's gonna be playing on the background. But like if it's something Kevin's doing fashion-like, then go ahead and pick something that's a little bit more flowy, a little bit bright, poppy, colorful. He's going for this K-pop vibe. So really matching that with what your talent's doing with the story of the project that you're shooting is really gonna help you take these visuals to the next level. Today, we're doing kind of like a fashion shoot. How can we kind of spice it up with different techniques? It's really about where you put the projector, right? Mm. So if you put the projector right in front of someone, say right above the camera, you're gonna get a very flat look. You won't get many shadows and you'll get the same image on your talent as the background, right? right? So then if you shift that over to the side, right? It's now just gonna hit your background and not your talent. So you'll get a little bit different look. If you bring it over behind you, it's gonna give you more of a volumetric effect. So you're not gonna directly be seeing the image, but if you add haze or smoke to your scene, that's gonna give you those light rays. You can also put it like directly above your talent and get really cool uh, oh, like yeah. uh, tubes of light that yeah. surround them. Look at these goosebumps, <laughs> dude. That's crazy. I wanna get into this. I can't wait to experiment with some of this lighting. We did a couple takes and we're on playback right now and I'm noticing a kind of a texture, pixelated texture on her face. I know it's not this monitor. Have you ever seen something like this? Yes. I'm going to a 1080 image and the 1080 image is then being projected onto a huge surface, right? So by the time it gets to our talent, we're then seeing those pixels again. I tend to, in my projects, kind of just lean into this effect. It already is a projector look. Let it be a creative decision for you. And if you don't want that, then move into the more expensive projectors. Or an easy fix would be to move that projector closer to your talent. I actually threw a filter in there as well. See if we can soften it up a little bit, but yeah, I almost like the idea of leaning into it as well as a creative decision. So 
So we're gonna change up the lighting a little bit. I have a couple Novas being set up um, and we're gonna use those lights to key her instead of the projector. We're only gonna use the projector to show imagery on the backdrop. I wanted to kind of play on the backdrop color. So we have a cloud, rolling clouds in the background, kind of like a pink and blue co cotton candy kind of vibe. And so I wanted to kind of use the lights and mimic those. And one of the ways I'm doing that is I can get the Cytos Link app, go to Color Picker, show it up at the blue, point it at the blue, pick up the blue, and now we've got a blue light. That's pretty dope. Can we drop the brightness of that projector? Or, yeah. or is this at 100? I'm gonna, I'm gonna play back real quick to see how fast the clouds look like they're rolling in slow motion. This is pretty cool. What we're experimenting is just the accent lighting. And again, this is just fun experimentation. I was gonna go with the key light in front of her to kind of expose her face, but I kind of like what this backlight's doing alone. And I'm kind of shifting her body to look to her right. And when she looks to her right, it's kind of giving us this silhouette kind of look. It's also my Instagram photo. It's like literally almost my Instagram profile pic. But I love the way it's kind of complimenting and staying within that moody vibe. I had him color it blue. I might experiment with some other colors as well. Let's actually do that. We have a Nova set up. We have a big diffusion as well to kind of soften that light. We have a floppy keeping our background illumination defined, not washed out because the other lights are hitting it and uh, we can maintain that clarity in the background. So that head in the cloud scene was actually one of my favorites. That was awesome, I thought that turned out great. But now, I wanna do something different. I kinda want her in a silhouette and kinda showing light rays. Have you ever done that before, and if so, how? Absolutely, and the key to this is adding haze. The images that we're projecting don't really matter as much as far as the content of them. What we're looking for now is more so contrast. You're looking for a black background. The light and dark spots will show up as volumetric beams. Okay, cool, let's do it. Let's go. The cool thing about this is behind and around the projector, there's so much stuff here, right? Right. Like we were worried about, you know, having to move the projector all the way to the other side of the room. Yeah. But in doing this before and turning out all the lights and knowing that those beams are basically gonna fill everything out and everything yep. behind it's gonna disappear, we saved a lot of time. Saved so much time. By just turning the camera rather than the whole world. I dubbed this episode WWJD, what would Justin do? <laughs> <laughs> That looks great. I yeah, think that's a wrap, good. guys. Good job, good job, good job. That was sick. That was awesome. That was the first time I ever played with projectors. Thank you so much, Justin, for showing me kind of the ropes and the technical stuff and the basics. I had a good time. Projector is so versatile. You saw how easy it was. You literally just either move the projector, move your talent, flag stuff off, use lights, don't use lights. Anything really actually looks good. And that's where I feel like People like us thrive so much because we just love creativity. We love open-ended stuff and just creating off the bat. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you guys for joining us. Hope you guys learned something new. But before we go, we got some questions we got to answer. Hit it. What piece of gear did you fall in love with when you first started shooting? Ooh, that's a difficult question. Um, obviously, I love cameras and stuff, but I think the first actual piece of gear that I fell in love with, the Steadicam. Early in my career, I fell in love with camera movement. We had a Steadicam that I could rent at my school. It was like a Steadicam flyer or something like that. And I think they even had a pilot. Any chance I could get, I had that thing on and I was learning. So I'd have to say the Steadicam, I use it a ton in my work now. That's a good one. So yeah, what about yours? Mine would have to be a 35 millimeter film camera. It was like a Canon AE-1, one of like the most basic film cameras, but that kind of taught me how to process of it all and like waiting to get it back. And Exposure, like it yeah. But I wanna know what piece of gear do you guys fall in love with when you first started shooting or what are you in love with right now? Comment below and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Justin, let's go get some lunch, baby. Let's go. All right. Ten speeds.